It's time for another out-of-state penny box hunt. And this one's from Louisiana. Hey everybody, it's Rob with Rob Finds Treasure, and that's right, we've got another out-of-state penny box hunt to do for you guys today. This one's from Louisiana, and I wanna thank Claude Will, who sent me a kind letter and a trade, a penny box from Louisiana, for one of my penny mats. Claude, the mat's already in the mail. You may already have it by the time you see this video. I wanna thank you once again. That being said, super excited to get into the box. Obviously, Claude already opened it for me to make sure that it was circulated since, and it is. So, you guys know the drill. I'll be using my penny coin roll hunting mat, as well as my microscope, and I'll be getting up close and personally on my computer screen so I can check for any varieties or errors we may encounter. Now, obviously, I'll be looking for key dates and semi-key date scents. Maybe some Indian heads. Never know. I don't know how Claude's luck has been in his penny box in Louisiana. And for any of my Louisiana viewers out there, you can let me know what to expect in this box down in the comments below. Before I get the hunt started, I want to remind everyone who's watching, if you're interested in my penny mat or my microscope, I have links to those items down below. And I'll even put a link to the site where I sell my mats and other goodies up above. Now that we've got that established, let's go ahead and crack open the first roll and see what kind of luck we have. Well, we're barely into roll one, about a third of the way through the roll, and we've already got our first find. It is a Canadian scent, 1999, and uh, we'll take it. Same roll, and we have another Canadian scent, and this one's a young head, so it's gonna be 1964 and earlier, and it's 1956. Was not expecting to find some Canadians so soon in this box. And being close to Texas, where I only get one or two at most per box, odd to see two already. Could be a good sign. Let's get back to the hunt. We're on roll number 12 and still no wheat scents on the board. Really no other finds besides our third Canadian. So it could be a box where we have very few wheat scents, but you never know. We still have 38 and a half rolls to go. Roll 14, and we're finally going to get our first wheat scent of the box. It was facing me. It's just a 53, but I think it could be an S. And it is 1953S. Kind of toasty, but an S mint mark nonetheless. And since I have you here, I did spy a Canadian. Number four, 1973 in pretty good shape. Roll 16. Wheat scent number two, 1957 Denver. Roll 18 is going to yield wheat scent number three. As I was hunting, I noticed it back here, and this one is reverse facing. And it's the oldest, 1941 out of Philly. We're on roll 21, and I cracked open the roll, and I saw what looked like could be a steel scent, so I took my magnet and it doesn't pick it up. I was excited for a second. Let's see what it is. And this one is gonna be a plated, you can see the copper coming through it, 1987. Cool find, probably plated with aluminum or something. Either way, doesn't stick to the magnet. But I do like finding these types of coins and I will keep it to the side. Now let's find some real things that are cool. Roll 32 is gonna yield wheat scent number four that ties the Canadians. This is a 1955 Denver. Cool toning, nice addition to the collection. We're on roll 44, and we're gonna find wheat scent number five. Just a 56D this time. Put it on the board, see if we can eke out maybe one more for a six pack. Roll 46, wheat scent number six. And that's a 1944. Well, now we're gonna get greedy. Can we get lucky number seven? Let's see. Roll 48, Canadian number five, 1981. Well, we finished that box of Louisiana State pennies and you know what? It was about an average box for what I would find in my area. We did get six wheat cents, which is a little bit better than we started off with. 
and a nice little couple at the end there to get to six. Thought we might get to seven at some point, but we didn't get there. Only a couple in the 40s and four in the 50s. So nothing really that old. The coolest find of the box was this plated 1987. It weighs 2.5 grams, so it's definitely a zinc scent. We've got five Canadians and four 59s. Not a lot of nice coins worth keeping to this side. I figure since we're a lot on the finds, I would show you what I do next after the hunt. Give me a second and I'll be right back. So the first thing I do is I take my copper finds and I dump them in my boxes that I have all of my copper scents in. Once these boxes get full, I go ahead and seal them up and stack them. I have about 65 full boxes worth of loose pennies. Now, because they're not rolled, they probably only hold about 2,300 pennies instead of 2,500 pennies, but I always shake them up really good, flatten them out really good, and pack them until they're nice and tight. That's how I stack and store all of my copper pennies. Now let me show you what I do with the finds. So after every hunt, I have jars labeled here 59s, 50s, 40s, 30s, 20s, and teens. And what I do is like for these two 1940s wheat scents, I throw them in the jar. And for the 50s, I also throw them in the jar. Then what I do is I take my 59 finds and I throw them in my 59s jar. This is all of the 1959s I have found through all my hunts. I have kept every single one. I have the same system for my Canadians, my nice coins, and my miscellaneous finds. I have jars for them. Once they're in the jars and the jars start to get kind of full, I then take these jars and I dump them out and I put them on the mat and I sort them by the year. So 58, 57, 56, 55, and so on. Once I have them sorted by year and the jar is empty again, then I take these coins and I'll show you what I do next with them. So every one of these boxes holds about 5,000 wheat cents when fully packed. There are 100 rolls and every roll holds about 50. Now some of these rolls might actually have 51 or 52 in them, depending on the thickness of the wheat cents. But after I've got them sorted by decade on the table, I bring them back over here and then I'll grab a roll and I'll go ahead and make sure it gets filled. And once it gets filled, like here's one we're working on now, then I move on to the next one. You can see on some of the years, we're running out of space. I keep expanding this system as I get more and more rolls from certain years. Now the rolls that are unlabeled are actually rolls waiting to get filled. I've allowed for some space in between the years for expansion as I have more finds. Now over here, after 1958, I've got my AU or mint state type coins from 1959 all the way to 1979. I will point out that I haven't finished putting some of my nicer coins in here. I have a jar of all my nicer finds that I study to sort and get in here. I am very picky from 75 through 79 because those are a lot more modern scents and I need to make sure they're just about perfect. Now I haven't accounted for any 1980s or 81s. I find so many nice examples that it would take a lot of rolls to roll those up. So I don't worry about doing that. In this system, I do not have most of them sorted by mint either. That's gonna be phase two. This is just phase one. And then finally, I'll point out that back over here, I do have rolls labeled Wheats AU. These are the nicer finds that didn't make it in my albums because before they go into rolls, Every single coin is inspected against what I have in my wheat scent album to see if it would upgrade. If it doesn't upgrade, it goes in the rolls. If it doesn't go in the rolls because it's nicer, it goes into the wheat scents that are AU or mint state in those three rolls. Now I know everyone has their own system, but if you like this system and wanna get something like it, then I'll have a link to these types of boxes down below. The box comes fully packed with 100 tubes, which to me helps me keep my inventory sorted if you will. Anyway, I just want to give you guys a quick bird's eye view of what I do. Obviously, I've got some catching up to do. We haven't done the 40s in a little bit and I'm starting to get more of the older ones as well. So these will need to be sorted and put into those respective tubes. And honestly, I still have another full box, like you saw that copper box, full of wheat scents, unsorted from all the decades that I've got to get sorted and put into these next before I sort them again. It takes a lot of time after the hunt 
if I get behind like we're starting to on some of these jars, but it's just my system and I enjoy using it. Hopefully you enjoyed the Louisiana State Box despite it not having lots of vines and hopefully you enjoyed seeing what I do after the hunt. If you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and as always everyone, happy hunting and thanks for watching.